Hi there. Welcome to the 2023 Evensky and Katz Cybersecurity Awareness Training Video presented by 24x7 Security. This video is part of a two-part training video series. Without further ado, let's get started. Before we begin, let's discuss the specifics of the course material. By the end of training video number one, you will learn alarming cybersecurity statistics, five key behaviors, how to identify phishing attacks, how to detect and address malware, avoiding activities that may lead to a computer virus, password management, and finally, what makes a strong password. Let's move on to some alarming cybersecurity statistics. Let's begin with the left column. Shockingly, around 85% of data breaches are due to human mistake or people falling for cyber traps. Every 39 seconds, a cyber attack takes place worldwide, and by the time I finished telling you this statistic and the one before, another cyber attack had just happened. Phishing emails are used to launch 91% of cyber attacks. We will get into this topic later in the training video, but current cybersecurity statistics indicate that phishing is still one of the most popular types of cyber attack. It works for most cyber criminals because it exploits human nature. Every 14 seconds, a ransomware attack takes place. Rest assured, it is not just talking about the US, but rather globally, but the fact that it happens so often is astonishing. Going over to the right column, 44% of adults felt more vulnerable to cyber attacks during the pandemic. Due to the changes in lifestyle during the pandemic, nearly two out of five adults took measures to protect their online activities and personal information. Hopefully, after this training video, you will also take the necessary steps towards protecting yourself. Cybersecurity statistics show that 95 user credentials are stolen each second. More than 3 billion passwords and other credentials are compromised or stolen each year, whether through data breaches or malware. Don't worry, we will go over some ways you can protect yourself. 47% of cybercrime victims lose money after being subject to a cyber attack. And finally, the annual damage inflicted by cyber crimes is predicted to reach 10.5 trillion by 2025. We'd like to now share with you five behaviors that you can start with. We know there are many more actions you could take, but let's start with these five steps for now, shall we? Those five being enabling multi-factor authentication, updating your software, protecting yourself from malicious links, using strong passwords, and being aware of phishing attempts. One of the most important behaviors to prioritize is implementing MFA, also known as multi-factor authentication, on any account that allows it. We'll dive into the different types of MFA in detail so you can choose the one that best works for you. Our next behavior is all about keeping your information safe. One easy way to do that is by regularly updating the software on your devices, whether it's your apps, computers, laptops, or any other piece of technology. Let's talk about our third behavior, which is becoming knowledgeable and aware of malicious links to protect yourself. Normally, an antivirus software is a safe bet to protect yourself, but it is not the only way to protect yourself. In this training video, we will go over some of the ways to protect yourself and warning signs to be aware of in case you are infected with a virus. Back to our fourth key behavior, using strong passwords on all of your accounts is an absolute must. We have a few guidelines that will help bulletproof your passwords to the point that a hacker may not even want to bother trying to crack your code. Our final key behavior talks about phishing, and as you learned in the last slide, the sole purpose is to lure you, just like a fish, to click on an email, social media post, or even a direct message that will be harmful. As a matter of fact, let's dive into everything phishing right now. Let's talk about how to identify phishing attacks. Let's dive a bit deeper into phishing, which is when someone tries to trick you into clicking on dangerous links or files through fake emails, social media posts, or direct messages. These messages often try to create a sense of urgency and make you feel like you don't have much time to act. Their sole purpose is to persuade you to hand over your money, personal information, or even to download something that may infect your machine. It is important to stay alert and be cautious of suspicious messages to avoid falling victim to phishing scams. So how can phishing affect individuals? As we discussed, a successful phishing attempt can have severe consequences, financial, reputational, or both. To be a little more descriptive, a phishing scam can install malware, also known as malicious software, on a user's device. Those same victims may also receive threatening emails that demand payment to prevent sensitive data or information from being released to the public. For cybercriminals, nothing is sacred anymore. 
there have been cases where they have even impersonated banks, where they will manipulate people telling them they need to update their banking records and need their banking information to confirm if they quote unquote got it right. All this hoping people send payments to their criminal accounts. You may scoff and think to yourself that it would never happen to you, but remember, the fact that we are talking about this shows that enough people have fallen for it, so do be careful out there. Here is the good part. How do you know what you are looking at is a phishing attempt? Well, is there a deal in it that seems too good to be true? It probably is. Does it use threatening, scary, or urgent language? Be suspicious of emails that claim you must click, call, or open an attachment immediately. Often, they'll claim you must act now to claim a reward or avoid a penalty. Creating a false sense of urgency is a common trick of phishing attacks and scams. They do that so that you won't think about it too much or consult with a trusted advisor who may warn you. Is it sloppily written, full of typos with grammatical errors? Professional companies and organizations usually have an editorial staff to make sure customers get high quality professional content. An email message has obvious spelling or grammatical errors, it must be a scam. These errors are sometimes the result of awkward translations from a foreign language, and sometimes they're deliberate in an attempt to evade filters that try to block these attacks. Is the greeting unclear or overly general? An organization that works with you should know your name and these days it's easy to personalize an email. If the email starts with a generic, dear sir or madam, that's a warning sign that it might not really be your bank or shopping site. Does it ask for personal information to be sent? This is a big red flag and no company or bank will ask you for personal information to be sent by email. If you want to double check if an organization truly requested something, call their number directly and inquire there. Do not respond to the email. Is this an odd or hurried business request? Once again, it falls under the urgent umbrella. If you ever receive a message calling for immediate action, take a moment, pause, and look carefully at the message. Are you sure it's real? Slow down and be safer. And finally, does the sender's email address match the business it is from? If the email claims to be from a reputable company like Microsoft or your bank, but the email is being sent from another email domain like gmail.com or microsoftsupport.ru, it's probably a scam. Also, be watchful for very subtle misspellings of the legitimate domain name, like Microsoft.com, where the second O has been replaced by a zero, or Microsoft.com, where the M has been replaced with an R and an N. Those are common tricks of scammers. Alright, let's see if you have what it takes to catch one of these malicious phishing emails and texts. Feel free to pause the video if you would like to test your knowledge on each of these examples before I give the answers away. Let's begin! For this first example, what gives it away that it's a phishing email? As a hint, there are two major giveaways. See if you can spot them. The attacker changed the sender's display name to appear as American Express, which means that if the recipient didn't bother to check the email address itself, they may not realize that it is coming from an email address from pentagon-seguridad.cl instead of an americanexpress.com domain registered email address. The American Express logo appears distorted, Sometimes simple is better when it comes to trying to make a fake email appear legitimate. How about this second example? This email contains three telltale mistakes that give it away. Do you know which ones they are? First, look at the email from field. The email comes from pigtask.com domain address instead of geico.com. Secondly, the sender set both the to and cc fields to send to the same person. Those fields have been edited to remove the recipient's email address. And finally, there are some weird capitalizations going on. Look at how they spelled out Geico or how they randomly capitalized the O in offers in the gray bar. Let's go into the third example. This is a text phishing attempt. Only one true giveaway here. Often, this type of text will be written as you've won a prize. Go to URL to claim your $500 Amazon gift card. If you don't remember entering a contest for anything, do not click on the link or you may inadvertently be going to a link that downloads malicious code like malware onto your phone, which can damage or disable your phone. Final example, there are two mistakes in this text. Can you spot them? Cyber hackers often disguise themselves as trusted institutions like your bank or utility company to sway you into giving up your password, PIN, or other personal credentials. In this case, a bank is closing your bank account and the website they are linking to is not the official Bank of America link. 
If you're still worried about the validity of a message like this, the best thing to do is to go directly to the company that supposedly sent it to you. It may require a call to your bank, but at least you'll have the confirmation from the source that your personal credentials are safe. So you now know what phishing is, what a phishing email can do to you, how to spot a phishing attempt, but how do you deal with phishing emails? Imagine if a phishing email is in your inbox right now, what would you do? Well, don't click on any links or attachments in suspicious emails, even the unsubscribe link or reply to the email. Never assume an unsubscribe link is safe in an email. Always hover over it with your mouse to see what the real website URL is. If the website link is in a suspected phishing email, don't click it ever. Unless, of course, your idea of fun is spending the rest of your day cleaning malware off of your machine and changing all of your account passwords. If the suspicious message appears to come from someone you know, contact that person via some other means such as text message or phone call to confirm if they did reach out to you in that way. Just like how we look both ways before crossing the street, we should also double check with our sender and ensure everything is safe. If you receive a suspicious message from an organization and worry the message could be legitimate, go to your web browser and open up a new tab. Then, go to the organization's website from your own saved favorite or via a web search. Or, call the organization using a phone number listed on the back of a membership card, printed on a bill or statement, or that you find on an organization's official website. Afterwards, report the message. Depending on the email platform you use, it shows the ability to report phishing attempts. I would double check with your email platform and see if you have that capability. And finally, delete the phishing email. Depending on your email platform, after you report the phishing attempt, your email platform may already delete the email for you. In that case, no worries. Let's talk about how to detect and address malware. Firstly, let's discuss what malware even is. Malware, also known as malicious software, just abbreviated, is a harmful software that was created to damage, exploit, disable devices, systems, and or networks. Within the malware family tree are the following types. Virus. There are various types of viruses, all of which do something different. Some infect your computer files, while others erase or replace content with unwanted files. Regardless, it is not something you want to get. A worm. It's a type of malware that spreads when you transfer files. They block systems and waste internet bandwidth. The Trojan Horse. Similar to the famous Greek tale of a giant wooden horse that was used as a decoy to hide Greek soldiers and launch a surprise attack on their enemies, a computer Trojan horse hides behind seemingly harmless programs and allows hackers to take control of your devices and steal personal data. Spyware. They gather data from your device without your consent and transfer it to another location. Adware. They track your computer's memory to find out your preferences and bombard you with advertisements. And of course, ransomware, which is when they block your device and demand a ransom to unblock it. Let's talk about some activities that you should refrain from doing to minimize the risk of your computer getting infected by a virus. Never open files without checking their source. Just like in the first example, the name is very long and the publisher is unknown. This can only mean trouble if you were to download this file. Close websites when your browser tells you they are not secure. Just like in the second example, this browser is telling the user that this is not a secure website. Your best bet is to click away from the website and try something else. Do not accept files from people you do not know and back up your files regularly. In this example, this is a screenshot of what the backup file screen would look like. You may want to Google how to back up your computer files for the specific computer or device you are using. And finally, do not click on suspicious links. Very similar to what we discussed in previous slides, if the links look odd or the offer is too good to be true, like in this example, report the email and delete it. Let's say you noticed too late or a sneaky email got past your trained eye. What should you do if you already clicked on a malicious link? While the best way is antivirus software, there are other ways to help prevent viruses from infecting your devices. Here are 8 things you can do or be aware of to help you in preventing any cyber issues. 1. Install antivirus or anti-malware software. It might seem obvious, but many home computers don't have this protection. It's essential to keep your PC virus-free. Keep your antivirus software up to date. 
Protective software is one thing, but keeping it up to date is another. While free antivirus software is better than nothing, it's not always the best solution. Run antivirus scans regularly. This might go without saying, but we often forget to do it. Adjust the settings so that they run at regular intervals like once a week. Using the device while antivirus software is running can be challenging. Try running it at night when the computer is idle because we usually turn off our devices at night. We tend to overlook scans. Set the antivirus software to run on a specific night and only leave the computer on at that time. Make sure it doesn't switch off automatically or go into hibernation mode. Protect your network. Many PCs connect to files, printers, and the internet via Wi-Fi. Make sure your network requires a secure password and never browse on open networks. You can connect to the network manually on your device by typing in the SSID, that is the name of the network, and password. If you usually let guests use your internet, give them an alternate SSID and password just in case. Think before you click. Avoid websites you don't trust. Don't open email attachments from people or companies you don't know. Don't click on links in unwanted emails and always hover the mouse over a link before clicking on it to see where it will take you. Keep your personal information secure. This is probably the hardest thing to do on the internet. A lot of hackers rely on social engineering tactics rather than brute force methods to gain unauthorized access to your files. By gathering sufficient information, they can hack into your online accounts and gain access to even more of your personal data. They go from account to account until they have all that they need to get a hold of your bank details and steal your identity. Be careful on message boards and social media. Block all your privacy settings and avoid using your real name in chat forums. Do not connect to unsecure Wi-Fi. Don't use any free open Wi-Fi, that is without password or encryption, in cafes, libraries, airports, etc. Think about it. If you can connect easily, how far can a hacker go? Back up your files. Backing up all of your files is the best form of protection. Ideally, keep your files in three places where you work on them, like your computer, an external storage device, and somewhere else. Use a backup service or get two external hard drives and keep one at work, a relative, or a friend's house, or even in a safe. Use several secure passwords. Never use the same password twice, especially for bank accounts. We usually use the same email address or username, which are easy to see and steal. If you always use the same password and someone uncovers it, it'll take just a few seconds to hack into all of your accounts. Make it easy to remember, but difficult to predict. Don't use dates or pets' names or your children's names as passwords. Speaking of passwords, let's get a little more in depth with them. Let's talk about password management. So what makes a strong password? No matter what accounts that they safeguard, all passwords should be crafted keeping these three simple guidelines in mind. Those guidelines being long, that your password should at least have 12 characters, unique, that your every account must have a separate special password to safeguard it. Try your best to not reuse passwords. This will keep your other accounts secure even if one of your accounts is compromised. Finally, complex. Uppercase, lowercase, numerals, and special characters should all be used in a unique combination for each password. Now that we know how to make a strong password, let's talk about good password hygiene. As we have said multiple times by now, never reuse passwords and try your best not to include easily guessable information like pet names, children names, birthdays, addresses, and the like, especially if this information has been posted on social media. Speaking of hygiene, the best way I can describe how you take care of your password is like a good toothbrush. Think about it. You never want to share your toothbrush. You want to choose a good brand of toothbrush and you want to change your toothbrush regularly. Think of passwords just like a toothbrush and you will be well on your way taking care of all of your passwords. What's an example of not taking care of your passwords? Having them written down on a piece of paper or sticky note and keeping them in a public location or around your desk. When you are thinking of creating a password, maybe think of creating an acronym of a phrase or maybe even a full passphrase. As an example, maybe your favorite football team is the Philadelphia Eagles, so you can write your password like my favorite football team is the Philadelphia Eagles. You can keep that passphrase if you like, but in case you feel like it is a mouthful, let's shrink it down using only the first letters of the phrase, which would look like 
M F F T I T P E. But now we can make it even trickier by replacing some letters with special characters or numbers. Now it looks like M F F T 1 T P 3. Hopefully this helped give you some insight on what are some ways you can create some strong passwords. Let's provide some context as to why passwords are such an important topic to talk about. Did you know that 75% of people get frustrated in trying to keep track of their passwords? In fact, people find it so annoying that they often resort to using easily guessable passwords. Did you also know that 27% of people have attempted to guess someone else's password? And of those 17% managed to guess the password right. This is why it is so important to set up a strong password so hackers do not break into your important accounts. Let me show you how important a strong password is, visually. In 2023, this is how long it would take a hacker to forcibly guess your password. With all of the current technology that is out there today, this is how easy it can be. Take a moment to pause the video and take a good look at the time it takes. Now think of your current passwords. Where do they fall in this graph? Hopefully, you are changing your passwords as we speak. We have reached the end of training video number one. Please continue this cybersecurity training video series with video number two. I'll see you there.